My name is Asha Batenga and today we are at, all at a discount. There is so much that is happening today. A lot of exciting things. We are going to have demos, different trainings. Like you can see, we have so many cutters. But we are going to hear from our one and only director, Shira Kaiwa. She should tell us what is happening today. Cutters. Different cutters. Abuli aina chizibucha cutter. Ida jai genga eva jikosesa. Kaka tika tulabe shida chicha tu gamba lero. Our director. Hello everyone. I'm Sheila Kaiwa. I'm very honored to speak to you today. Today is a wonderful day for us. We have demonstrations about the cutters and baking tools. We are hosting Mr. Pius Chiomukama and we have our consultant, Ram Masemwang. So these cutters, we, last month we had a promotion on cutters and they have been on discount, 5K and 10K. We are summarizing the discounts on these, these products today and tomorrow. So everyone is welcome to come and buy, come experience the how to, to do demonstration, how to have easy deco on the cakes. Thank you so much. They are at home, they are juices, they are sodas, cakes, cookies. You're most welcome and we're waiting for you. Okay, so now that you have heard that from the horse's mouth, these things are very, very, very cheap. 5k, 10k, yola otwale waka. So, um, Mr. Pius Chomkama is a very good cake artist and he's going to be with us today. He's going to demonstrate. And we also have an in house artist called Rahma, he's also going to demonstrate. Like you see, all this is on sale. This is the climax of what is happening. The whole month it has been gula yola yola yola. So today is our climax. So come, enjoy, blast, buy, spend, buy for Christmas, everything. It was gala gwe kwase mbuno banange kanuka wede yo. Jango kagure. See you later. Um good morning once again. Uh, my name is Pius Chomukama Tumini. Yes. Uh, some of you know me to be working for Cake and Keki. Yes. Um, I, <laughs> yes. Um, I can tell a few faces are familiar. Um, to those that you've not met before, I welcome you to this demonstration. Um, it's going to run from today up to tomorrow, same hours. Um, so, feel free to bring in questions, whatever you have challenges with most of the tools that we have around. Some are on my table all, all over. We shall try to find solutions and where we can be fitting them in our design works. I do not have anything rehearsed, so when you bring it on, we shall just have to create what it can do for us. Because I think in design, um, we shall not be looking at buying stuff to only serve one purpose, perhaps. There is so much that we can do using the same tools. And I think it's the purpose of the demonstration today. Yeah. Uh, I know some of the tools and equipment have been giving you challenges here and there. And uh, maybe just because you didn't know one or two hacks, you know, of how to achieve the very best with the same tools. So we are going to start with, uh, I would say, the simpler, smaller tools, and then we shall keep taking it bigger. Yeah, so feel free to ask. Feel free to ask the same question if you really think you've not gotten it right. Yeah, because we are here to answer most of those. I would like to start with some of the embossing designs. I don't know how many of you have such may be kept out there, you're not using all you used once and felt like it served the purpose and you've now shelved it aside. Okay, 
we can use them in so many areas and um, I just want to pick out a few perhaps and demonstrate them and then we see. Maybe if you're already new to, you'll have two more to add on to them. We are going to entirely be dealing with gum paste and fondant. Yeah? And um, one thing I have to emphasize about uh, fondant is that first of all, you must have it right for you to be able to do any other thing you want to do with it. If your fondant is not right, it will break. It will cause all those mishaps that you've already seen all hard of. So you must always start with good fondant. Yes. Okay. Um, Whenever you're dealing with embossers, one of the things that you need to put in consideration is how deep your embossing material is. I think you've come across some that are a bit shallow, then there are those that are deep. You're not going to use a deep one when your fondant is thin. You will not get the results, you'll cut through, okay? Yes, and then also the depth at which you emboss will determine how much of the fill effect that you'll get, okay? So let's uh, first have this. Uh... We have that, okay? And um, at some point you felt you need to put it around your cake or maybe you need to decorate the board with this, running it around. But I think you can also still get a little more creative with it. For example, you would choose to have a surface where you've embossed this, okay? And then cut this out. Emboss the same, for example, on marbled fondant. Cut the same embossed surface and fill it in here. part of the marble should we use? This one? Yes. I always have a challenge choosing which part to go for. So you don't have to struggle to find how to make a colored butterfly and then emboss it in there. You would still do the same. So those of you that want maybe to cover the cake board or something, you can run this around your board, depending. Even on the board itself of the cake. And I think you've seen how we made the marble. So um, I'm joined in by Sindropa. Yeah, from Cake and Cake as well. She's my personal assistant. <laughs> yes. And most importantly, my wife. Yes. Thank you. Um, roll for me number three. A strip of number three. How many of you have challenges using this? Hey, almost the whole house. <laughs> yes? Yes, yes, yeah, need that number. So, um, the, the, yes, you want to pass here? Please do. Uh, the trick here is, uh, first of all, you must have, the, these are called tapits. Eh? 
And if you realize the word tap it is just the same as the word sounds, you tap it. But the trick is going to be the consistency of your either fondant or gum paste. Okay? Now, what you always have to do is that you must always have your one of the two sugars you're using, either gum paste or fondant, to be quite thin so that it is able to cut through. When it is very thick, it will occupy all this volume inside and won't be able to cut through. So you're going to struggle getting it out. Uh, trick number two is uh, you must let that sugar set. When I say sugar, meaning either gum paste or fondant, you must let it set a little bit such that it's no longer uh, sticky. You don't need to use shortening here. You don't. If the sugar has set a little bit, it will be able to come out by itself. You just need to tap it, and so it will come out. So, you need the um, Yes, you can. You can, depending on the consistency of your sugar. Yes. I'll, um, um, I'll be using the word sugar a lot, but just understand it's fitting in for those two. Eh? Either gum paste or fondant, yeah. Yes. So you can put in a little CMC, yes, fine. So it can set a little faster, okay? And then a thinner sheet. Yes. If it's thick, it's going to occupy all this volume in here before it even cuts through. Okay. Um, there's always going to be differences in the roller sizes for these machines. Uh, the thickness we need for this one, according to this machine, will be number one. This. Uh, it, it has a, a lever that sets the blade, the roller, okay, to a given thickness. So right now, we are talking about number one. Yes. Ah, now going to me, Bunoy. One other mistake that usually happens is that uh, we roll this fondant sheet and then because the letters are not rhyming with the word you want, so use the whole of this only to pick out one letter and then you have to roll again. That's a waste of time. You're working out the sugar so much, you might tear the fibers. So that's why we are cutting into small bits such that you're able to cater for each letter. One letter at a time. Yes. So the most important thing is to make sure that the fondant or the gum paste you're using is paper thin. Okay, and then you cut the small size and then you set the hammer one by one. And 
This one actually comes out again before we tap it. We let it sit. Uh, I need the spatula, eh? I'm going to go painting knives. I'll take it there. Get me some. Mm. Want it to sit. <laughs> this is X. We are trying to have the palette knives brought in because it's so fragile. So we need to pick it with something that can hold it all at once. If you try to pick it with your hands, then it's that delicate. Hey, uh, uh, palette knives, eh? Oh. Hey, the small ones. Mm. Mm. How many of you own these ones? Uh, these, these are palette knives. We also call them spatulas. Yes. Uh, very, very crucial. <laughs> if you're decorating, very, very crucial. Application of textures on fondants, uh, picking up such small things. There's, there's just so much they do in the decoration bits. So like I said, if you're going to use them, these fonts, let them set a little more, then I'll show you. If there is any tool you must own, this must be one of them. You might have so many other ways of achieving what it does, but this comes in handy. Just own one. You may not use it today, but you'll use it tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, don't apply too much, just apply enough. So bottom line is, if you're going to be using your hands to pick this, you'll deform it. That's why I'm applying some little glue and then using this to tap where the glue touched, a little bit of that, and then it guides me to align. You can choose to distort your line, you can choose to make it a straight line, depending on your design. But just know, you must not distort the shape because it's very thin. Okay. Do we think we can use this now? Um, I can anticipate one of the challenges that usually gets when you buy these, you get stranded on where exactly you should use it. How many of you know this method of covering, the paneling method? You do. Who else knows? You do. Uh, yeah, it's me a bigger piece here, fondant, eh? And I'll need to go. Can I go in now? Okay, Mali is all right. Because I need more to wrap in game, okay, a little bit, eh? So, um, this calls on your faculties of creativity uh, such that you do not have this and then. Then it's done. Like, 
Osolo jiko eso kudikorating ku board zizo. Osolo ji decorating sa ku board kuno. Atene bo decorating even if you decorate on this body with it there's so many other designs that you can still do. Okay? It can remain uh, plain. You can choose to a brush with a fill effect as in I can have 15 cakes out of this. <laughs> yes, yes. The point is, just don't look at it for what it looks like it can offer only. It's just that. Yes. Sometimes maybe let's say you've, you've designed up this cake and you're trying to, you know, to, to decorate a compound and stuff. This comes in handy. You know pavers that are this kind of design. So you're already covered for. Okay. Now, um, let's emboss this. Don't worry. Abatala ba ukuvere ma begamu ya kuwa msobo lo kula ba la video eh. They are after. Uh, the amount of pressure jo exactly inga ko. You know kuba minimum, average, rushing and average. Boni genyo, you're going to cut through. Boni gen pola te kagen da ku emboss inga bulungi. Sometimes you want to go back to the same position in which you are and it's so hard for you. So you need to train yourself on how much pressure you need to work with consistently as you move. It may not come in one try, but maybe when you try the second time or the third, you'll be able to get it. Okay? Yes. So, we have this now. And like we are going to demonstrate later, we can still have a whole mat made that runs around the cake in this design. I can choose to have this plane. I can choose to airbrush with an a fill effect. I can choose to have this mat already made before as marble and then I put in this. There's so much you can do with it, okay? And then one of the other things that I'm very certain usually challenges is how to... Yes. So, are we together? So, are we together on this? Yes. Any questions so far? So, um, I hope you are beginning to comprehend like how much you can do with this. Bo bo yagala ku succeeding amucho eh Cheta gano ko esa method ene yokpanolinga eh Lower your fondant emboss on the fondant the whole fondant calculate the fondant you need in terms of this height ne length okay cut it as a band onto your rolling pin and come and unleash onto the cake Yes, there are some designs you're going to make using fondant or even gum paste where you can't roll on a very hard and static surface. If you want to feel this, for those of you that have not interacted with it, please feel it. So as you work, the amount of pressure you exert is the same resistance you'll be getting. So it's spongy. So you're, you're able to insert a design without tearing your sugar, without tearing your fondant or gum paste. So that is the purpose. Like what she's going to demonstrate, if you just do it on a very flat surface, 
chances are high that you're going to tear it. So okay? Yeah. 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 Okay, no problem. Halfway on the fondant, halfway on the foam pad. So use the ball to So you can use different colors of your fondant. You could do an ombre effect where you start with the dark color, lighter, and you go to white. Or they can all be the same color from up down. You'll be making ruffles of material. So this would actually do the same. They are all green patterns. They are called frill cutters, eh? Frill. So she's going to use a pasta machine so we can get consistency now. Thickness, okay? Yes. I'm going to turn it, eh? let me first keep it to a direction. It is very okay for you to use toothpicks. Because um, until today, I know that the toothpicks sold here are made of bamboo. Mm. Yes. They are only 
part of the wood family that does not harbor bacteria. That's why we use it for our toothpicks. Okay? Yeah, because it doesn't harbor bacteria. So it's very okay to use it here. It's very safe. It's food grade. It's everything good. The purpose of me putting this here is that I want them to set in this position. I'll later on pull them out. And remember, uh, I push them right below this. So in other words, when you're at eye level, you'll not be able to see where I pricked. Okay? But they'll have served the purpose. Making sense? Okay. So we shall later on pull out these toothpicks, okay? And we just want these to set in position. Of course, there will be about a millimeter of collapse, but it will not go beyond in case it happens, depending on the prevailing conditions. But if the fondant is good, it may not even move a millimeter lower okay now this can be there's so much you can do with this you can choose to build an ombre effect okay use like one family of colors but different tones eh? from a darker tone to a lighter tone there's so much you can do with this you can choose to airbrush this you can choose to touch with metallic colors for the tips here there's so much you can do just so much but I hope you get that technique, okay? All right? So you do not have to struggle that much when you want your cake drum to meet your board. You can choose to simplify with that. There's so much you can still do with this. You can have it as plain, you can have it marbled, you can have it with a... You can also use a nozzle like we used without filling them. There's so much you can do. I'm very sure so many of you, Banji Kumwe, you've bought these. Not Uka, not Ekamu Konfla, not Ekamu Engano, maybe Ghana, then you just put these aside, right? Yes. Uh, don't worry anymore. What you should now worry about is how much you carried to buy things, not using them. So, let's see how to use some of these. Bambi Munyambe mu bigule kubanga ambisumurudde. Sina je mbitwalanga te mu biguze. So So, uh, when you're dealing with these molds, yeah, one of the challenges that I know you've been facing is that you get a whole kilogram to start with. It's all patched up here. You try to pick a knife to cut and whatever part you're getting away from is also following you. So I know. Isn't that a problem? Yeah, yeah sure. So let's take advantage of the shortening, okay? 
Do you have the pack? The shortening, yes. They are going to show you the pack, yeah? Um, not too much. I'm only using the little that I've been able to smear in my hands, okay? Okay? I'll pick some little more. And then do this in here. Avoid putting too much. I love to roll a sausage. The most important thing is use enough. Don't start with too much. Because if you start with too much, there will be too much work created for you now later on eh? in trying to cut off the excess. So here is the trick, okay? I'll just use enough. So I'll roll into a sausage and watch. Eh? I'll guide this in here slowly. So I'll fill it in here. Realize I've not used the knife at any point, isn't it? Because I'm using enough. One of the challenges that you usually get is the streaks that usually keep in the edges here. So you find that your neatness is questionable, right? What you do in this case, get back to these edges, try to push a little bit inward, a little bit inward, okay? Already this is coming out here. Okay? It's now time for us to get it out and effortlessly, this is how it comes out. This out. So if you want those borders that are not so bold, this should be able to serve you. Good enough it's on the same mold with this, so there is so much you can pick from here.
it's close enough in there. Yeah. So you see I'm tearing off the exit, just keep pushing it away. Want to dry or wait? Where are the pallets? Mm. The knives. The knives. The ones we are using, the small pallets, knives we are using. These are metallic sprays. They come in uh, very many colors. They have so many colors here. Uh, they should be able to save you the hassle of applying the pigment to your cake. It's especially if you're trying to beat time, because we say the time in this business is yes. So um, this should be able to run you so fast as you're working. Uh, there is no serious magic behind this. You just need to understand how to use it, okay? Uh, this is basically compressed, like, you know, there's, it, it's compressed. There's, uh, there's a lot of pressure if you release here, okay? And so, you just need to know what distances you need to be at and how much you should be able to push here. Otherwise, if you're so close and the pressure is high, then it will run. Okay? Yes. And then secondly, some patience is needed here. Uh, it's okay for you to do one run. After a few minutes, come back and apply another coat, isn't it? Don't stick to one spot until it gives you that color that you're looking for. Because remember, what you're dealing with is liquid. Eh? Yes, and it can only do so much if you force it. Okay? So, uh, the distances at which you do that really matter. Okay? Okay, just a second. Okay. See this? Uh, maybe one of the things that you need to watch out for is uh, you might want to apply this color, for example, it's a band running around and you don't want to touch these other areas, then you need to blind off a part, okay? Using something like uh, masking uh, tape or uh, anything that you can use that will be able to hold eh? and only leave that space that you want to work with. 
Yes. Um, Zikola ku cakes make a cheese, Size ya cake.